Hey, welcome to Bronx Porch Homestead. Well, it's a sleet and snowy day, as as I you know as I had mentioned the other day. So, gotta feed the hens. I'm gonna give them some strawberries today. Gotta feed the rabbits. I also I'm gonna bring the hay, and I gotta change out one of um, Charlie's uh, blankets. So, let's get ready for that. It's cold out there. Well, it's one of those yucky days. I just finished giving the hens some strawberries. I couldn't film it though. I had too many things on my hands, guys. And it's very slushy. It's not like a pretty snow day. It's very wet. Very sweet, actually. I did get hen I did get some hen eggs there. I got four, which is great. Look at that. Okay, so Holly's actually in there. And Charlie's in there. I, I'm keeping them away because I don't want um, Holly to get pregnant again until we get her fixed. So I got to update you on what's going on there. I know. In the meantime, I'm going to feed her and give him some water. And then I'm going to go back inside. Yep, I definitely put on the wrong shoes this morning. <laughs> I have sneakers on, which means I'm going to have to. Look at that take them off when I get back so I just finished fe feeding Holly lots of hay some meat I mean some meat some pellets and um, some water so she is in a big kennel and there's some windows there on the side and this is open but I do have a um, tarp over it and then a blanket just to keep the rain out and a little bit of warmth inside. Hopefully tomorrow I'll bring the kennel down. This will have all dried up a little bit, keeping my fingers crossed, so that she can come out and run around. Okay, to do Charlie's, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because there's so much things I have on here. actually pretty dry but I have to give him his food. I'm only going to open up the one side and then the rest I'm just going to. It, it's really a uh, heavy, heavy wet snow. Let's give Charlie some food. Give him a oh! Oh, oh! oh, come on, Charlie. Get down, get down. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> Here you go, Charlie. Here you go, Charlie. That's a first for me. Wow, he jumped pretty high. That's high. Okay, I need to get a, uh, a cup here for him. Okay, now I know not to leave that open when I don't want him to come out. All right, I think we're good. Let me get the hay. Wow, that's awesome to actually see. give him some water all right that's it for now I'm going to get him the water come back and then after that I gotta dry myself off okay guys I am back from the chores outside you know it's funny how like when you don't want to do something and you know you have to do it but you don't really prepare the right way so in between taking takes, um, you know, with the, with the camera, I had to go come back inside twice because I forgot the water bowl 
and I forgot, what else did I forget? I forgot the water bowl. I also forgot an extra uh, cup to put the food in. So <laughs> that just shows you, right? So that was just like, that's unprepared. And then I didn't want my ears cold. So the only thing that I did well was to, to put on a hat and put on a jacket. What I didn't do well was my feet. So um, I am taking off my sneakers that I should not have worn. I should have worn my winter boots. And then my socks are actually drenched, but I'm on a little rug in the kitchen. Um, I wanted to continue this conversation. I'm just hanging up my coat by the door. I have to have tea. I just have to have tea. I wanted to have the conversation because I know I've mentioned it twice already. I wanted to update you on um, Holly and the kits. Um, let me get the tea on first. Yeah, definitely tea. Wow, you know, snow is nice. Uh, it's great. But um, it's that snow that is painful to be in because the sleet is coming down hard. It's like hitting you on the back. And even if you have a jacket on, you know, you get that one sleet coming down your neck. And that's what happened to me several times. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a few things I need to update you on. All right, so let me update you on Holly and the reason why she's in there. We had a amazing birthday, right? With the with the um, kits. Let me spin you around this way. Hold on a second. Okay, I had to get myself situated here. Um, okay, so we had a great day with the kits. Um, and we saw that the kids were um, getting a little bit fat on the belly uh, and that was because we forced the kids onto Holly's nipples when Holly was laying down. Um, and so there was uh, this hope, you know, that, um, that they may all survive. But in the back of our heads, we knew that um, one or two or even three were not going to do that based on what we uh, have researched, right? So uh, they were pink and um, and so we encouraged Holly, we gave her a little bit of bananas, we gave her hay. Um, she was really being pampered, you know, quite a bit. And so the second day um, we had to help with the kids latching on to Holly because Holly kept pushing them away. She kept um, going to the other side of the pen. Um, we brought them inside because inside, because outside was cold and the actual um, structure of their pen, um, there was no place for the kids to get warm, you know. Um, the nesting box was turned upside down, uh, so uh, so that's one of the reasons why uh, we we brought them here so we can monitor. So anyway, that night everything looked great, um, and so we figured that Holly would feed on her own the kits while we're not there because that's what rabbits do. They feed their kits when nobody's looking matter of fact a lot of the rabbit breeders that we have been listening to say that they've never seen their rabbit feed the kits okay all right good um so we gave her privacy um 24 hours later i went into the room in the morning um and then i i looked into the pen and I saw that the kits were all separated as though they were thrown around in the pen. Um, and then I did see some blood on one of the towels. Um, and it seemed that Holly had eaten one of the rabbits, one of the little kits. So 
again, I knew about rabbits uh, first time or second time uh, rabbit moms doing that for several reasons. Um, there's territorial reasons why they do that. There's the reason that the kid may be the weakest one in the group. That's usually the reason is because it may be the weakest one. And this was a small one. It was smaller than the rest. So we, I, we assumed that probably that was it. However, throughout the day, the kids kept getting much more slower in movement. And we also noticed that Holly did not feed the kids during the night, during the 12 hours that we left her to her privacy. Um, and, uh, and so they were, you know, they went from a fat belly to very skinny, wrinkly belly within 24 hours. Um, the other thing is she chewed out of the pen, Holly chewed out of the, uh, the pen later that morning. Uh, we tried to save the kits, the ones that were remaining. I think there were three of them. And I even got uh, the closest that I can get to milk. I'll show you what that looks like. So we ended up getting, according to all the different advice, we ended up getting kitten milk, um, which was easy to put together in, in a little... Um, in a little glass jar and we did it at warm temperature and then we use these little these little uh, things here this is this is drop by drop in the beginning this is perfect and then we had the syringe um, so we tried to feed the kits for two days um, and it looked like it was doing okay I mean they were moving a little bit more than when we saw them in the pen However, as time went on, um, each one of them passed on. So again, each one of them I put in the compost. I felt that that was the right thing to do. Um, so we weren't that upset. I'm going to be honest with you. My tea is going here. We weren't that upset because, I mean, everyone in this home did so much research on kits and the and their survival rate and all the different um issues and elements that re that revolve around the rabbit giving birth and you know when you think about it when i think about it i have to ask myself well there's a reason why rabbits can give birth every single month i mean literally every month rabbits can have kits and that's because you know the reality is that you know fewer than 10 percent of orphan rabbits you know survive the week now according to according to other research like i've been seeing i'm i'm in i'm in front of my computer now i've been seeing the same thing said by rabbit.org by web veterinarian and they all say the same thing they do say that um, by the second week, 50 to 100% of kids don't make it. The reason I bring this up is because we saw a lot of videos out there that showed um, the rabbits day one to day 30th, and they're sweet. And we didn't see, a, we didn't see almost any of the videos that talk about when kids don't survive and i don't think that's fair because it gives the illusion that all kids survive every birthing i mean there it, it when the more you see videos the more you say well what are we doing wrong we're not we did the best that we could we we actually wanted to be as natural as possible so we wouldn't left her al alone during the um from five o'clock on to um the next morning so that you know she has that privacy she can feed them that one time 
Um, but it didn't work out that way. She's just not a maternal rabbit. Uh, I don't want to say she's a bad rabbit because she's not. Um, she's just not maternal. I saw a video where um, the the host of the video said, well, if the rabbit doesn't breed, I mean, if, 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 if the rabbit has gone through three episodes, then just get another female rabbit, you know, don't use that rabbit, just get rid of her. So this is a breeder. We don't have Charlie and, and Holly for breeding. Breeding is a full time job. I think if you are having, if you have rabbits, it's either because you are breeding them um, to eat, you're breeding them to sell, you are, or you have them as pets. Um, and then unfortunately those pets end up, you know, uh, getting disposed of like in the parkland or something, because we have seen that too. You know, that people buy them for their little kids and they don't realize that the rabbits are actually high, high maintenance, a lot more high maintenance than, uh, than hens. Um, so for me, um, I don't intend to keep breeding. That's not why I have Holly and Charlie. I have them because they benefit my garden. They add to the quality of the vegetables that I buy. So I don't mind ha having rabbits because I take their waste, I take their, their poop, their pellets, I take their urine, I use those as fertilizers for my garden. And I, and I put them in my compost. They make a very good high quality compost, which I intend to sell one day to my locals. That's to my locals. I'm gonna sell them or to the community gardens or give them to, um, uh, homeowners that just may need like a little bit, you know, something like that. I, I haven't figured that out, but that's the reason why I have these rabbits is because they're pets to me for my mental wellness. You know that, but more important, even more important than that is the fact that they really provide a quality compost, uh, to the vegetables that I have. So breeding wise, I'm not going to subject Holly to another fourth pregnancy she's just not cut out for it you know that's just you know some so you know that's that's nature right that's 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 you know that's life so um i am keeping holly away from charlie because i don't want holly to get pregnant again now holly's in that wonderful kennel um it's a very big kennel she can't chew out of it um, and you know, it's funny because I went, I went there last night to see how she was doing. I gave her some bananas. Um, I treated her very nice. You know, what she did is just something instinct to her. I don't, there's no malice there. I mean, she ate one of the babies. Yes. But there are so many reasons why, uh, that is done. Um, and so, you know, she's not a bad rabbit. So, um, I'm going to continue to keep her, uh, but I am going to have her fixed. The reason I'm going to have her fixed and not Charlie fixed is because, you know, if anything should happen to, um, Holly, at least I still have Charlie who can still, uh, get another female rabbit pregnant if we decide to do that in the future. So the options are there. If we decide to do that and Charlie is neutered, then we would have to get, it's, it's just not going to work. Then we would have to get another male and, um, and, and it's just, I, I, we just think that it's better that the female is the one that gets spayed and then just leave uh, Charlie there. Um, so that's my, uh, you know, update. Um, I think that's about it. So for those that are seeing videos, uh, about bunnies and about the birth of bunnies and you've never been through it, um, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, we are not being hard on ourselves. Uh, I think the second time we could have done better. Uh, you know, that's how we feel. But this time, I, we can always do better, you know, but this time it was really not, this was out of our control. 
this time was really out of our control. And, and it should be, you know, we don't want to control the natural process of, of, um, of rabbits and their young, you know, if it wasn't meant to be, then it wasn't meant to be. So, um, so yeah, so that's about it. So now you're updated and now I'm going to go drink some tea and I'm going to take the rest of the afternoon off and go see what my daughter's doing. And, uh, well guys, until the next time.